This is more important to me than any other thing. Our work with God must improve. We must go better. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today is the Father's Day. I want to get a happy Father's Day to you all. Let's look at the importance of the father figure. Let's look at the importance of the uh, of a father figure. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me start by first of all commiserating with some of our youths and our young ones. Hmm. Some of you are not privileged to grow under the tutelage of a father. You know, or a father figure. It could be very painful. You know, when you see the young ones or the youth around you that have no that privilege, you can see the difference. Amen. I also want to empathize with uh, single mothers out there. You know, who for one reason or the other never enjoys the companionship of a father figure for their children. You know. In days like this, you don't, there's always a pain in your heart. You know, you begin to feel that. In fact, to some extent, you don't even have honor for, for men in days like this. What, what's it all about? It's because of the pain you have gone through in trying to, you know, bring up your children all alone with fear for you. But I just want to encourage you, if you are such a mother, you know, who had not enjoyed the, 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 the office of a good father for your children. All I wanted to do is to please forgive them. Forgive that man. Forgive that husband. Forgive that father. Supposed to be a father. Please forgive. I'm sending this message to the whole world. This is, this is very key at this time. Days like this, some mothers are not happy. Am I right? So mothers are not happy on the on the father's day. In the same way, on the mother's day, some fathers are not happy. And it's supposed to be a time for healing. I want to use today as a healing day. Amen. Amen. On the other hand, also let me also empathize with you know fellow fathers and grandfathers, you know, um, who had a very rough, you know. You, 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 you try to be father all alone, trying to bring up the children all alone. There are fathers like that too, who are also not happy today. I want to encourage you today, today's your day. Be encouraged and thank God for all the journey in life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know it could be very painful when either by death or by separation you are alone as a father on a day like this. You begin to look back and say, I wish my wife were around. I wish the house is filled with joy. But I want to encourage you that there is still hope. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we cannot overemphasize the importance of a father in a, in, in a family. You know, God has designed it such that, look, the position cannot be, we can't afford to make it vacant. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, research has shown a lot of family and societal ills and woes as uh, there as a result of the absence of the father or a father figure in the family. We are going to share some of this experience. We are going to share some, some facts about the impact of not having a father or the father figure not playing their role at all. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's very important for us to, to, to take note of this. When you look at the hierarchy, it is God. After God, when we talk about God, I'm talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Trinity. Then after that, we have the parents, the father and the mother. Then next what? We have the child or the children. Amen. That is the order. No other person can play this role. No other person. No, no school teacher can play that role. No house master can play that role. Amen. 
I want us to take note of that. That father plays a major role. And let's look at the society and see some of the effects. Let's, let's get some facts from research done. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, when you have children raised in a father absent home, they are more likely to experience behavioral problem. Praise the Lord. Do we agree with that? These are facts that have been well researched. Adolescents in a single mother or single father families are at the high risk of risky behavior, victimization, and mental distress compared to those in two parents' family. May God help us. We are, we, are, we are sharing this so that we we, we we brace up. We need to brace up. Let everyone play. You know, let's let's play our role. Let the father play his role. Let the mother play our role. The two must be together. Praise God. The absence of a biological father continue, contributes to increased risk of child mistreatment. Adolescent boys with absent fathers are more likely to engage in delinquencies than those in with fathers who are present. Amen. Amen. These are facts. Another fact I want to share with you is that adolescents or teen boys who live with their dads are less likely to carry guns and deal drugs. Amen. We are not saying they cannot carry through, but they are less likely. And also, further involvement in schools is associated with the higher likelihood of a student getting mostly AIDS. Amen. In other words, fathers are enjoying and encouraged to get involved more and more in children's academic activity. When they get to ask them, take their papers. Arrange how the how the study, the results will be different when you are not involved or when I'm not involved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we getting something at all? Amen. Amen. Allowing the new fathers to be involved in caring for their uh, child in the first day of a child's life can have positive life long term benefits. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is very, very key. This is practical. You know, I remember when I started, it was very difficult for me to carry a newborn baby. You know, they look too, thin, too, too fragile in my hand. I used to tell my wife, no, I can't. Carry. I find it difficult. You know, especially the first, on the first day of this. I can't. They look so delicate in my hands. But over time, I learned to carry them. Amen. And I give God the glory. You can see here, I was carrying my first grand baby. Amen. Clap for me now. Hallelujah. We clap for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The pictures are not for white man, white man alone. We also have the practical results. Amen. We are not talking theory here. Amen. It's, it works. You know, when you, when you get used to carrying your baby from childhood, you get attached. There's a long-term benefit. There's an attachment that remains with the father. Praise the Lord. Another fact is that here in America, the number of, uh, of children with an incarcerated father grew 79% between 1991 and 2007. Can you imagine? May God have mercy. Ninety-two percent of parents in prison are fathers. This is alarming. And what will happen to the children at home? You can see the, the I mean the effect. May God, may God deliver the fatherhood. Involved father, involved dads leads to less distress in toddlers. Amen. Amen. You learn to, to to carry your children, carry your 
your grandchildren is very, very sweet. Amen. And that's what I was trying to do there. Praise the Lord. We give God the glory. Hallelujah. When you see my picture, just clap for Jesus because it's it's not easy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm training to encourage us. This is not theory at all. This is practical class. This is practical information so that it can transform us and it can encourage us to do more. Fathers, mothers, let's do more. That's involvement during pregnancy it positively influences health outcomes for mom, dad, and baby. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I remember this day, I, I was, you know, I, I, I rushed to the hospital. I said, please, I want to carry my first grandchild. I want to carry my first grandchild. And that's a picture. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty Jesus. Amen. Let's, let's, let's go on quickly. Daughters are less likely to engage in risky sexual behavior when they have consistent contact and a sense of closeness with their dad. Higher quality father-daughter relationships is a protective factor against engagement in risky sexual behavior. Amen. How close are you, you know, to your daughters, fathers? This is very important. Don't leave the responsibility to the mothers alone. You need to help the daughters. Another fact I'm bringing to you is that there are 2 million single father households here in America versus 10 million single mothers households in the U.S. Yes. Amen. This is, this is alarming. What will happen to these folks? Men with absent fathers are more likely to become absent fathers themselves. Share reaction. My prayer is that this word, this message, this information will challenge our fathers and will challenge the family. The problem we have in the society actually starts from home, from the family. Children who live with their dads do better in school. Do we agree? Amen. These are facts. Women with absent fathers are more likely to have children with absent fathers. Mercy, Lord. Involved dads reduces reduce mom's parenting stress. Amen. You can see. We can see how we are also involved here. This is um who is this? Okay, the, okay, I second the uh, grandchild. <laughs> Mercy. Yeah, glory to God. We give God the glory. Involved dad improves their children's overall emotional and social well-being. Praise the Lord. There's another one here. The father being involved in every one. You can see one guy here. Amen. You know that guy? Amen. Yeah. You know this guy? Zaki bodies. Amen. The man who just finished praying now. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. You can see the picture there. We give God the glory. We are showing all this one, not just, just not just theory. We are giving God the glory for giving us the practical experience. To be able to share, to encourage us. Amen. Because God wants us to raise holy seeds. Praise the Lord. God wants us to raise holy seeds. Kingdom fathers are teachers. Teachers, I mean, they are, they are, we, are, we are coaches. Fathers are trainers. They are role models. And they are the child's first mentor. Amen. If you are a father and your, 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 your son or your daughter could not see you as a role model, then something is wrong. Something is wrong. Amen. Now let's look at the truth about that father. What 
how, 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 how is God? He was in, in the mind of God. Let's look at the book of Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 18 rather. Genesis chapter 18 verses 17 to 19. The Bible says from verse, okay, from verse 17, it says, Shall I hide my plan from Abraham? The Lord has. For Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation. One man becoming a great a mighty nation is awesome. And that nation is Israel. And all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. Amen. We are being blessed through Abraham. Amen. Verse 19 says, I have singled him out so that he will direct his sons and their fathers to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Then I will do for Abraham all that I have promised. God singled out Abraham. Amen. That is God brought out Abraham to make him an example for all the fathers to look at. We only want to claim the blessings of Abraham. We don't want to claim the responsibilities of Abraham. And this is the challenge of the world today. As you are claiming the blessings of Abraham, you must endeavor to also imitate Abraham as he, God has singled him out. Because God knows that this guy will train his children. He will, he, he will, he will, he will cause their children to walk in his way. Now let's look at, I love the way message translation puts it. He said, then God said, shall I keep back from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham is going to become a large and strong nation. I speak increase to your life. I speak growth into your family. I speak enlightenment into your family. You know, if the God that made Abraham to become great will make your family great. We make your home great in the mighty name of Jesus. You are not going to remain small like this. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said it's going to become a large and strong nation. All the nations of the world are going to find themselves blessed through him. How many of you are enjoying the blessings of Abraham? The blessings of Abraham are, are yours in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, yes, I have set you on him as the one to train his children and further a future family to observe God's way of life. Yes, I have settled on He said, God said, I can bank on, I'm banking on Abraham because he's going to train his children. Can God bank on you, fathers, here in me? Can God bank on you, families here, that you will train your children the way, the way of the Lord? This is key. Upcoming fathers, upcoming parents, please take note of this. God is banking on you. Let God say, I have set you on you. I am, I am, bring, I am, I am trusting that, look, you are going to train your children in the way of the Lord. This is key. We are in a world, in a society, whereby people, people just, just do whatever they like. We are in a society whereby you don't, you must not touch the child. Ah, there's liberty. There's freedom of expression. There's freedom of everything. You live the way you like. Hey, no. That's, I mean, freedom without boundaries can lead to hell. And that is what we are seeing in society. We are given freedom without boundaries. Say, yes, I have settled on him as the one to train his children and for the official family to observe God's way of life. Live kindly and generously fear and fairly so that God can complete in Abraham what he promised him. Amen. We can see it means Abraham did not fail in his responsibility. That is why God fulfilled his promise in Isaac, in Jacob, in the 12 tribes and in the nation of Israel today. Praise the Lord. When you look at the, uh, the book of Proverbs, when you look at Solomon, the son of David, see what you write. When you read the book of Proverbs, all the chapters, it starts like this. Here are my children. 
Hear my children, the instruction of the father. In chapter 4, he said, Hear my child, my children, the instruction of the father. And give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the side of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. Can you see? Solomon confirmed that look, my father did it, taught me. My mother taught me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Parents, we have the responsibility of training our children the way of the Lord. Amen. This is key. Let's look at the message translation. I like it. He said, listen, friends. So some fatherly advice. So some, sit up and take notice so you'll know how to live. I'm giving you good counsel. Don't let it go in one ear and out the other. When I was a boy at my father's knee, the pride and the joy of my mother, he would sit me down and drill me. Hallelujah. Amen. Solomon confessed that, look, his father, David, we sit him down and begin to drill him the way we go. Amen. This is the responsibility of the father. When life did you did you, did you sit, sit your son down and drill him and put him in the way of the Lord? Amen. Praise the Lord. This thing could not, I mean, it did not come cheaply at all. It's costly. When they are doing the drilling, it's not easy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So many times, my, my our children will say, you know, Dad, we reset their head at times like this. We reset and I, when I had that word, I was embarrassed. I was only setting their head. <laughs> Mercy. Praise the Lord. Today, their head is correct. Amen. And I give God the glory. Amen. This is what David did for Solomon. He said, He will sit me down and do me. Take this to heart. Do what I tell you and leave. Amen. This was the instruction of David to Solomon. Praise the Lord. Give your children instruction. They may not like it. In fact, it's not it's not necessary that they like it now, but they will like it later. Praise the Lord. They will like it later. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Proverbs 22, verse 6, the very popular scripture. It said, point your kids in the right direction. When they are old, they won't they won't be lost. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Uh, Proverbs chapter uh, 22 verse 6 Let me read King James Version This is message translation I'm coming to that Praise God He said train up a child In the way he should go And when he is old He will not depart from it Amen Message says point your kids in the right direction When they are old They won't be lost Amen there are a lot of kids that are lost today. There are so many out there on drug, on God, on sort of ter all sort of terrible things. That, why? Because the parents have failed to point them to the right direction. The Bible says, when they are old, they won't be lost. My prayer is that your children will not be lost in Jesus' name. The grace, the energy. For you to be able to point them in the right direction of life. Not the way they like, but the way God says they should go. Lord, I pray that you will release that grace upon these parents in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray for all our children in the, in the house. And all our children in our family, all the people hearing me right now. That your children will have ears that hear. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Your children will have the heart that will receive in the mighty name of Jesus. And the grace for you to sit them down and drill them. Receive in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you must not be too psychedelic to train your children. Don't be too sophisticated to train your children. Don't be too busy to train your children. Please, we are in a society where 24 7 you are running up and down. No time for that child. Hey, it's going to be a problem at the end of the day when you don't have time for that child. 
You must create time to train on your child. It is very important. The father has that responsibility. When you take that responsibility away and pass it to the to, to the teacher in school or in boarding school, many of you you drop your child in the boarding school so that the teacher and the house master will be doing your work. It is wrong, it's not gonna work. No teacher, no house master can play your role as God has ordained you to do it. Amen. The teacher won't do it. We are just deceiving ourselves. You cannot say you are wiser than God who created you to take care of that child. He did not say, take your child to a training school, to, to a boarding school, so that somebody else can do it for you while you are running up and down. May God have mercy. And that's the problem of the world today. And I pray that each time we celebrate Father's Day, when we celebrate Mother's Day, these are days for us to have a rethink. We need to reset our brain, to reset ourselves to the right paths, so that we can be reminded of our responsibilities and our role as parents. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And before I close the message, Maybe you are a father, you are a mother, there you are not giving your life to Jesus. I am telling you, there's no way you can train up a child the way we go if you have not given your life to, to Christ. Because you won't know what the Bible says. If you are not giving your life to Jesus, it will be very difficult for you to know how to train up your child in the way of Christ. Amen. And if you are ready to do so, why not you know say this short prayer with me? Say, dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Please forgive me. Come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Now help me to live for you the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said this prayer, you know, God has put your name in the book of life. It may sound simple. There is a prayer of faith, and I will encourage you to join yourself to a Bible-believing church. This is very important. You need to learn God with other brethren. You can't learn God alone. You can't be a Christian alone. You need to join yourself to a Bible-believing church. And if you are new seeing around this one, why not join Faith and Grace Church? Where God will continue to you be trained and you will be a disciple in the will of the Lord. And my prayer is that this message will not stand against us in the end. Amen. You will not regret hearing this word because at the end of the day, this word will come alive. My prayer is that our children will not say, our children will not point at us and will say, you are a bad father. You are a failure. There are so many fathers that are failures. I want us to bow down our heads and pray to God this day. Let me need to pray for our fathers. Let me need to pray for our spouses. Let me need to pray for us. Let's pray, fathers in the house. Let's pray that God, I won't disappoint my children. I won't be a failure. I won't be a failed father. I won't be a failed mother. Mothers, pray for your pray for your husband. They are fathers. Pray for them that the anointing they need, the grace they need to be good fathers, to be responsible fathers, to be loving and caring fathers, that God will give them, that they will not feel in their responsibilities towards their children. I want you to pray as you are growing up, as a growing father, that by the time you look back, you will be able to say, Lord, I thank you. Pray for the grace to be good father. Pray that your children will not be, we, we, they, they, they will not be lost. <laughs> Pray for the grace to be able to point them into the direction they will follow, so that your children will not be lost. There are a lot of lost one outside there, in the streets. So many youths are there. So many are in crime. So many are in prison. Pray that your own children will not join them. Pray that our children will not join them. Our children in faith and grace church will not join them. Lord, help us, Daddy. In Jesus' name we pray. 
I want every one of us to stretch out our hands like this. Let's pray that these hands, we will not use this hand to bury our children. We will use this hand to calm them. And we will use this hand to nurture them. We will use this hand to train them the way of the Lord. But we will not use this hand to, 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 to bury any one of them. We will not use our hand. Our children will not go to prison. We will not use this hand to go and pay. Your hand will not be, be used for any evil. Your children will not involve in any evil. This, your hand is anointed. It's sanctified. That your hand, Lord Almighty, anoint this hand, O Lord, for good works. Anoint this hand, O Lord, to be able to train up, raise up my children, Daddy. The way of the Lord. The way of the Lord. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. We bless your name. Lord, I pray that this hand, O Lord, you anoint this hand. Anoint this hand for good works. I want you to say that hand. Lord, anoint these hands for good works, Daddy. Lord, anoint this hand to be able to train up the children, Daddy. The way they should go in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray none of this hand will bury their children. Amen. Father, none of this hand will bury their children. Amen. None of this hand will bury their children. Amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We bless your name. Lord Almighty, I pray today, Lord, we mark a new beginning in our life. Some decisions are being made, oh Lord, to become good fathers, good mothers, in the mighty name of Jesus. Some determinations are made that my children will not be lost in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray.